Well, welcome back everyone. Today I want to talk about 20 things that you can declutter from your kitchen right now. The kitchen is often called the heart of the home and that's for a good reason. It's one of the most used spaces in our houses and because of that naturally can accumulate clutter. And the problem is when our kitchens are cluttered, our space is naturally less functional. We want to cook in it less and just keeping our space clean can feel stressful and like something that we're always trying to stay on top of. And so by decluttering and simplifying in this space, we can transform our kitchens into something that's functional and fun to spend time in so that the heart of the home can be filled with life, joy, and laughter. But I realize decluttering your kitchen can feel like a daunting task and it can be hard to know what to get rid of or where to begin. So to help get you started in this journey, I want to share with you 20 ideas for things that you can declutter from your kitchen today. And we've got a lot to cover, so I want to get right into it. If you haven't already though, be sure to hit that subscribe button below for more simple and intentional living videos coming at you twice a week. And let's get right into this. So starting off, number one is pots and pans that you don't use. Like many of the items we're going to talk about today, pots and pans are certainly two things that we tend to own way more of than we actually use on a regular basis. Often, whether we bought them or we're given them, we'll have these gigantic pots and pan sets that have eight or nine even different pots and pans that you can use for different cooking purposes, but chances are there are only a handful that you actually use on a routine basis. By all means, keep the ones that you like and regularly use, but I would donate or try to sell any that you don't use regularly or that you can't remember the last time that you took out to use, even if that means breaking up a set. And then number two is to declutter any excess mugs that you have. I find that mugs are one of the items in our lives that can accumulate faster than almost anything else. So I'd recommend just automatically getting rid of any mugs that have seen better days, whether it's because the picture on them is fading, they're cracked and chipped in multiple places, or anything like that. And hopefully that will help to automatically reduce the number that you have. But then from there, I'd recommend just deciding what is a realistic number of mugs that I should own, and then declutter to hit that number. And then number three is cooking utensils. For this one, I'd start off by going through and determining if you have any duplicates. Do you have two spatulas, two wood spoons that are practically the same, multiple sets of salad tongs? I would go through those and just keep your favorite version, decluttering the other. Then once you've gotten rid of any duplicates or even triplicates that you may have had, I'd go through your reduced stash and figure out if there's anything that you haven't used in the past six months or a year. There are some very specific and honestly kind of wonky cooking utensils out there, and if you own any of those that you don't regularly use, I'd also recommend donating those. And then four is tea towels. Now there are two big things to look out for in this category. First is having far too many tea towels to the point where many of the ones you own you never actually end up using. When it comes to paring down an excess of items, I really like to use use as the barometer of whether or not I'm going to keep something. If I use something regularly, that's usually a good indicator for me that I should keep it. But if I never actually reach for something and always go for a different option, that can help me understand that maybe it's time to let go of that item. But then the second thing to consider in this category is also the condition of your tea towels. If you've used an item to the point where it's actually worn out on you, that's great. That means that you actually loved and used that item, which is the purpose of the possessions we own, to provide value to us. But it's important for us to understand once an item has worn out, it's okay and it's good to let it go. Okay, number five is china and holiday dishes. And I think it's fine to keep special occasion dishes in your home so long as you actually use them. But far too often I see people who have china sets or dishes that are kind of themed around specific holidays who never actually use them. And so if you have dishes like these, ask yourself that question. Do I actually use them? Or, and be honest with yourself, is it something that you kind of wish that you used but never actually get around to when holidays or specific special occasions come up? And then six is a really practical one, and that's just to declutter any old dish sponges or dish rags. I don't know about you, but I can sometimes be that person who keeps dish sponges in my home for 
far longer than I actually should. And so this one is pretty straightforward, but as you're decluttering the rest of your kitchen, just check quickly on your sponges and your dishcloths and figure out if there are any that it's just time to throw up. Number seven is to declutter cheap or dull knives. And usually I find these two go hand in hand because yes, you can sharpen dull knives, but if they're cheap, they'll quickly return to being dull pretty much faster than you can blink, it feels like. When we own large knife blocks or just kind of have accumulated lives over the course of our lifetime, most of the time, like with our pots and pans, we'll use a small percentage of the actual number of knives that we actually own. The highest quality and most practical ones we own tend to be the ones that we use. And so with this one, try using those two factors of use and quality to help determine what you should keep versus what to get rid of. A small collection of good quality knives is going to be far more useful and practical than tons of dull, cheap ones. And just keep in mind as you do this too, there is a distinction. Expensive doesn't always mean quality and cheap doesn't always mean cheaply made. So focus on the quality of the knife rather than the price. And then eight is niche kitchen appliances. And there are tons of really specific kitchen appliances out there, whether that's a panini press, a waffle iron, a pasta maker, and the list goes on. And here's the thing, none of these appliances are a bad idea to keep if you actually use them but more often than not, we'll buy these appliances with a really specific idea in mind of what we're going to make with them or how we're going to use them. And we'll actually use it for that purpose a few times, but then after the novelty wears off, they'll just fall into disuse and start collecting dust in our kitchens. If that sounds familiar, and maybe like I just described an item or two that you can find in your kitchen, it might be a good idea to declutter those items. But of course, if you have an air fryer or a waffle maker that you regularly use, by all means keep it. The thing that we're wanting to focus on here is just getting rid of the things that are collecting dust in our kitchens and adding to the clutter. All right, the number nine is measuring cups and measuring spoons. I feel like in a lot of kitchens that I've been in, people have kind of mismatched, disorganized sets of different measuring cups and spoons that don't necessarily go together. And somewhere in there, there's a complete set, but there are a lot of like random one-off measuring spoons or measuring cups that don't actually get used because they don't belong to a full set, they're weirdly shaped, maybe you have too many of them you were given as gifts, and so there are a lot that never actually get touched. So just go through all of your measuring tools and figure out if you have any one-off items that you never use, any items that might be impractical, or maybe ones that you don't have the complete set to and thus never reach for. Keep what you like and what you use, but then get rid of the rest. And then number 10 is to declutter your spices. And with this one, I'd start off just by going through and getting rid of any unused spices, whether it's because you don't like that particular spice, but it came as a part of a set, or you bought it for one recipe that you did one time and haven't touched it since, or maybe you just have spices that belong to a cuisine that you don't normally cook in. So get rid of the spices that you barely ever touch, and then consider too if you have any expired spices. And we don't often think of spices as having expiration dates, but over over time, spices and herbs lose their flavor, meaning that they're going to be a lot less potent when cooking. And so if you have any spices that have basically lost their flavor at this point, or the vast majority of their flavor, it's like hint of cayenne by this point, I'd get rid of those too. Then finish this off by seeing if you have any duplicates. If you look through your collection and find that you have multiple containers of the same spice, just try condensing them into one container. That way you can just kind of simplify your collection and easily see what you have on hand. Okay, and by this point, I hope that you're feeling really motivated to get started with decluttering your kitchen. And if you are, I have some exciting news for you. This week, I'm teaming up with a whole bunch of other amazing YouTubers like The Minimal Mom and Clutterbug to help you declutter your kitchen. So after you finish watching this video, just scroll on to the link in the description box below, and that's going to take you to a massive playlist with tons of amazing videos that are going to help you as you declutter your kitchen. So after you finish watching this video, don't forget to check out the link in the description box below. But now let's continue on with number 11, and that's freezer burned foods. 
And if you've recently had fluctuating temperatures in your freezer, or simply you've left an item in there far longer than it should have been, items naturally get freezer burned and are no longer enjoyable to eat in the slightest. So just take a quick pass through your freezer and make sure that none of the items that you have are inedible and freezer burned beyond repair. And number 12 is baking ware. And there are two common problems in this area. First, if you have too many baking ware items, whether there's far too many loaf pans for you to ever actually use or baking trays or anything like that, just figure out what you actually use on a regular basis and how many you need and declutter it to meet that ideal number. And then second, there are some really niche baking ware items out there that we might have been given as a gift or bought thinking we'd use that never actually serve a practical purpose for us. Whether that's bunt pans, awkward sized baking sheets that just don't really fit in your oven well, maybe it's cake pans and you never actually make cake, Whatever it is, if you don't actually use those items and maybe they're just too specific to really be useful to you on a regular basis, it's a great idea just to donate those. And 13 is glassware. And I see this all the time where people will have kind of a disorganized combination of some glass cups, some plastic cups, some souvenir cups, and it's all kind of jumbled together. And like we've been talking about for all these other items, keep what you like and what you use and get rid of any items that aren't in good condition or that hardly ever get touched. But then when it comes to deciding exactly how many glasses you should keep, there are two different options that I like to choose from. The first option is to think about what is the max number of guests that you have at your house on a regular basis. However many it is, keep as many glasses as you need to be able to give everyone you would normally have at your house a glass. And then the other option is just to keep the amount that realistically fits in your dishwasher. Especially if you don't enjoy running the dishwasher all the time, keeping enough glasses on hand that you can fill up your dishwasher is a great idea. And then moving on, number 14 is to get rid of any expired, stale, or rotten food in your fridge and pantry. And this is something that's good for us to get in the habit of doing every so often. It doesn't take long, but just check in on all of the food you have and make sure that it's still good and edible. And as you get rid of any expired foods, pay attention to, to any items that are about to go bad so that you can focus on eating those up before they expire. And then 15 is food storage containers. And I don't know exactly how it happens, but I find that food storage containers so easily can get mismatched and just lost. So take a few minutes and just try to pair up all of the food storage containers you have to make sure that the lids and the containers actually match up. If once you've gone through that process, you find lids or containers that don't match up, you can declutter those. And then also to consider if you have too many. Often we'll buy containers like these in large packs and sometimes we'll use all of them, but other times we'll use some of them all the time and then others hardly ever. Maybe there's a specific size or shape of container that you don't like, but as we were talking about earlier, don't be afraid to break up the set and just get rid of what you don't use. And then 16 is to declutter unitaskers. And I heard this term recently and really liked it. This is those single use kitchen gadgets that only really do one thing and serve one specific purpose. And so here we're talking about things like strawberry hullers, avocado peelers, citrus presses, or anything that kind of falls into that category. And there is nothing wrong with keeping items like this if you actually use them, but often we'll buy novelty items like this and they'll just kind of go untouched in our cupboards. Sometimes it's just that the item doesn't work as well as we thought it would, or other times it's a novelty thing that we bought, like the waffle maker example we were talking about earlier, thinking we'd use all the time, and then we actually very rarely reach for that item. If you use any unitaskers, great, keep them, but just get rid of any that are collecting dust. And 17 is unused or really specific cleaning supplies. If you have a wood polishing kit or some other really specific cleaning supplies that you never actually get around to using, you can definitely get rid of those. And then if you have any cleaning products that you find either don't work well or there's something that you prefer and thus that item has literally just been sitting in your cabinet for months or years without being touched, get rid of those as well. And here's the thing, there can be a lot of value in saying, okay, I'm going to keep something until I've used it up. But sometimes we say that and then still never get around to actually using it. And that item just kind of stays in our kitchen forever. If you don't use something and you know in your heart that as much as you want to say that you'll use it, you'll never actually finish that item off, it's better just to get rid of it than for it to take up space in your cupboards permanently. 
Okay, and then number 18 is promo gear. Basically, this is talking about anything that has a logo on it, whether it's a cup that you were given at a 4K, a mug, a bottle opener, a water bottle, whatever it is, if it has a logo on it and you don't actually use that item, you probably don't need to keep it. More often than not, these items are cheaply made and don't actually add value for us. And then we've got two left here. 19 is chipped cups and dishes. For some people, the moment a chip of any kind occurs, it's time to get rid of that item. For others, a small chip might be nothing to worry about. But what I'd seriously consider is by the time your dishes or your mugs start developing multiple chips in them, there's two, three, maybe even four chips in a single dish, it might be time to move on from that item. Chip dishes just don't look good and depending on the size and the type of the chip in a specific dish can also be a safety hazard. And then finally, number 20 is mismatched utensils. Take a quick look through your cutlery drawer and see if you have any utensils that don't match the rest of your set. Random one-off utensils can find their way into our lives sometimes, whether it's because somebody leaves it behind at our house or we accidentally take them along with us after visiting someone else's. So just go through and check if you have any that don't belong and if you can return that utensil to its owner, but if not, just donate or declutter it. All right, well, those are the 20 items that you can begin decluttering from your kitchen today. And I hope that they really give you some inspiration and ideas as you start simplifying in this space. These ideas aren't universal. They aren't one size fits all decluttering rules. But my hope is that you can take them and apply them to your kitchen, to your life and your lifestyle, as you figure out what you want to keep versus what you want to declutter. And if you are ready to get started with decluttering your kitchen, then you're in luck. I've put together a free PDF checklist of all of the items that we've talked about today, plus a couple more that can help you get started with decluttering. So if you want to check out that free checklist, I'll have that linked up in the description box below for you. And finally, if you want some additional inspiration as you declutter, I definitely recommend checking out that mega motivation playlist. Again, that'll be linked below for you. All right, well, that's everything for today's video, but don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And remember, you can always follow me on Instagram for additional daily inspiration and updates. Thank you all so much for watching though. Happy decluttering and I'll see you in the next one.